Earlier this week, Russia issued an arrest warrant for Senator Lindsey Graham following his strong comments made about the war in Ukraine while visiting Ukrainian President Zelensky. But does that worry him? Well, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham joins me now to respond. I heard you say, bring it on, Putin. What, what, what do you tell him? By the way, Putin, you know, he's a karate man. You got to be careful. I, yeah. Yeah, I do, I guess. But let's put it this way. My chance of getting a fair trial in Moscow would be like Trump being tried in San Francisco. I don't like my chances. So, uh, yeah, this is freedom, right? We live in a free country. You can criticize me. I can criticize Biden. We can all criticize Trump. But what was my crime? I spoke truth to power. I said his invasion of Ukraine was illegal and brutal. He's a war criminal, and they want to put me in jail. So uh, uh, God bless freedom. Yeah. And, and Senator uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who was a, a, a president of Russia <laughs> yeah. in between Putin's two permanent terms, yeah. I guess. You know, he went after you. I, I, he even used some terms, words like yeah. uh, assassinate or kill U.S. senators. What's your response to Russia? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be deterred from speaking truth to power. You know, I want the war in Ukraine to end. I don't want a war with China. I you know, we, we screwed up Afghanistan that enticed Putin to invade. And let me just tell your listeners, uh, if Putin gets away with invading Ukraine, he will not stop. No American soldiers are involved in this war, and I want to keep it that way. Let's make sure Ukraine can drive Putin out. If that happens, China is less likely to invade Taiwan. So they're trying to silence me. Can you imagine living in Russia and being worried about what you say. We live in a, a democracy where you can speak truth to power. So I'm not going to be deterred. I'm not going to be intimidated. I think it's in our national security interest, Eric, to give weapons and technology to Ukraine. Let them do the fighting. Let them push Putin out. And that will make the world a safer place. You know, late last night, Senator, the House passed the, uh, I call it the McCarthy debacle. But uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you like I think I heard yeah, you say yeah, you didn't yeah. like it because... You know, because of the cut to spend it to military spending. Go ahead. Tell us what your thoughts are on that thing. Well, I, number one, we do need to get our fiscal house in order. So I appreciate what Kevin tried to do. There's some things in this bill that are good. But let's don't kid ourselves. We haven't done much damage to the IRS, okay? At the end of the day, there are a lot of gimmicks in this spending plan. But what we did do damage to is the military. You'll never convince me that this is the party of Ronald Reagan. This bill uh, cuts defense spending uh, 40-something billion below inflation. This is Joe Biden's defense bill. All of a sudden, it's our bill. We've been, you know, criticizing this bill for a year. This bill reduces the number of ships in the Navy from 298 to 291, while China's going to go from 3, 340 to 440. So I just think it really hurts our defense capabilities at a time of great threat. I think the spending cuts are more illusion than they are real. I like Kevin. I don't mind compromise. But my number one job, as I see it, Eric, is to give our military what they need to defend us. And you always make military budgets based on threats. Let me ask you this. Do you feel safer now than you did last year? Uh, no, I feel equally as, as uh, threatened as I did last year. I feel less safe than I did when Donald Trump was president because, as you point out, when he was president, Amen. it wasn't Putin <laughs> saber rattling. It wasn't Putin threatening U.S. seated <laughs> U.S. senators then. Right. But certainly, as soon as he leaves office, and we got the guy who can't yeah. even, you know, walk off a stage without falling. Um, and listen, yeah. no offense, but yeah. he's, it's time for him to go. I feel bad if it's elder, it's elder abuse almost. But no, no, I don't. And, and here, so, Senator, very quickly, yeah. so there's no limit to spending. They can spend. So why yeah. wouldn't Putin just say, I'm Putin? <laughs> why doesn't right. Biden just say, yeah, we will fix the military spending and adjust it for inflation? Good question. Because they not, in their world, welfare spending is more important than military spending. Uh, these guys are liberals from the left. The military budget is a, an annoyance. It's money they could be spending on helping people who won't work. It could, you know, grow in the government. So we've got a classic debate here between guns and butter. If you left it up to the liberals, we'd have a rowboat uh, and a pistol and a kite uh, to defend America. So it's up to people like me and you to make sure that the liberals uh, give money to our military. 
you know, we live in very dangerous times. Iran's on the march. China's threatening Taiwan. Uh, Biden's weak. I'm glad he's not hurt. I have nothing against the president personally. I'm glad he's okay at the Air Force Academy. But he's been a terrible commander in chief. Our border's broken. So my job is, is to stand up to these guys, stand up to Putin, mm -hmm. yeah. and also stand up to the liberals here at home so they don't gut the yeah, military. He, he, he certainly doesn't portray strength and, and you know, American you know, right. badassness across the yeah. world stage, especially yeah. after a day like today. <laughs> Senator, really good having you on. If you need me to watch your six, I got your back. Thanks. If we're going to head over to, to Moscow or something I, anytime <laughs> soon, we'll, we'll do that. I, I feel good knowing you're on my team. God bless. <laughs> you too. You too, sir. Thank you.